Welcome. Let's talk about some integration basics that you really need to know uh, as you're getting into actually finding definite integrals for yourself. And the first one is uh, relatively straightforward, and that is what if we have the integral from a to a of a function? Well, let's just draw a function over here. Here's my function f of x. And if I'm integrating from a to a, what I'm really asking is how much area is there over the point a? Well, there's height. We've got height, but the width is zero. And zero times some height is zero. So it makes sense that the integral from a to a of a function is just zero. Secondly, we have the integral from a to b of a function. So let me write a b up here. So if we're integrating from a to b, what I'm really doing, remember, I'm adding up rectangles. So I say add up the first rectangle, then the second rectangle, then the third rectangle, and so on. Do, 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 do. And eventually, we get the definite integral from a to b. What if I add up starting at b and go backwards? Well, then the distance... Uh, between these two points is calculated as negative and I'm going backward I'm going negative in my uh, width instead of positive so it's calculated as negative area and so it negates that integral so if I'm integrating starting at a going towards B uh, that's going to be the negative of starting at B and going towards a so you can flip these two values, a and b, at any time you want to, but you have to add a negative to the front. Third piece is what if I'm integrating from a to b, and I want to break it up at some point in between a and b. Let's call this point c. So is it OK to say that the area from A to B is the same as the area between A and C. So first take this area and then add on the area from C to B, this area. And just intuitively, it makes sense that the area between A and B is the area from A to C plus the area from C to B. And in fact, that is true. Okay, so we can always break up an integral like this. And by the same token, if I'm integrating from A to C and adding an integral, so I'm going from A to C and then I'm adding an integral from C to B, I can just combine those two integrals into one integral from A to B. Okay, so that it works both ways, in other words. So these are just some kind of basics of integration that it's nice to know going into taking some derivatives. One other thing I might mention really quick is remember that if you have an integral of something like let's say 4 times f of x dx this is really a sum. Okay so really if you pull this 4 outside of the integral sign and write this as 4 integral of f of x dx that's fine. What did I just do? I just factored out a 4. So there's nothing wrong with pulling a constant through. That's totally wrong if you try to pull a variable through. Okay, If the variable of integration, in this case x, if you're trying to pull any x's through the integral sign, that's a problem. If it's just a constant, that's fine. We call it factoring. Okay, So you can pull constants in and out of integral signs. So those are just some integration basics that I'd like for you to be familiar with before you get started with integration.